Hello friends. Meet Simba. Simba say hi hi. You say hi to friends. Hi friends. Oh, I'm going to have him sit on my lap here for a minute. He's not really excited to sit on my lap. Okay, there we go. We're going to chat for a minute about Simba. Today is the last day he's going to be in our home. And so I wanted to share a little bit of a story about him. Feeling a little bittersweet about it. I'm actually feeling a little emotional, which is surprising me a little bit. Um, Simba, for the most part, is a very sweet dog. But as my husband likes to say, he is a little bipolar and has some vicious spells that leave us kind of scared and terrified and anxious in our own home and it's not working for us anymore. So we found a good home for him to go to and mainly it's a home where he'll be able to roam and do whatever he wants, what he wants to do. Um, and here we have had him and um, it's actually almost a year and a half exactly. Oh, don't puke on me. Why don't you just sit right here? Can you just sit right here? Um, so we inherited Simba. He was my mom's dog. And for those of you that are familiar with me and my story, my mom passed away unexpectedly about a year and a half ago. And um, <laughs> my dad was a little bit of he didn't really have a home for a little while because someone was living in his home and then he was selling the home and we were all like, who's going to take Simba? And um, he ended up at our home. So I wanted to share a little bit of the story about our family and how it came to be and, um, and now we're saying goodbye. So I wanted to share a video of some good times and um, just so he can be well documented, I guess, a little bit. But my husband and I are not animal people. And that's one of those things that we don't like to readily admit because those that are animal people judge us, I guess you could say. Um, they think that we're heartless and you know all of these things, like how could you not love animals? They're so adorable. And like, yeah, I, I can appreciate the animals are cute, but um, neither one of us were ever interested in having an animal slash pet in our home. Um, he just growled a little bit. He's not happy with sitting here right now. Usually he's happy to just sit on my lap and cuddle, but um, so with that being said, um, we never really planned to have a dog. And when we took him in, Ooh. Ooh, that's Ooh. okay. Oh, somebody's going by the window. That's okay. When we took him in, it was a huge sacrifice. Um, on our parts and I had to kind of convince my husband it surprised me that I was like we can take the dog we can take the dog I mean in the frenzy of my mom passing away he was actually in Ghana with my parents so he is an international traveling dog um, my dad was bringing him back there was funerals he was going back to Ghana to finish up all the stuff when he came back there were people renting his house he was living with my brother my brother had a dog wasn't super excited about the idea of having a second dog there at the time. And so um, I said, we'll take the dog, we'll take the dog. And my husband looked at me and he's like, we will. And I was like, yes, we can do this, this is temporary. And I think in our minds, we thought we're gonna hold the dog for grandpa until he gets settled and then grandpa will take the dog. Well, my dad's never been a fan of animals either and he just kind of let my mom um, have him because he knew how much she loved her, how much she loved having animals. Um, so, uh, that was the story there. So when we had him, we kind of thought, okay, it'll just be a little bit, maybe a couple of months. And then when my dad gets settled, well, once my dad got, my dad actually didn't get settled for, he lived with my brother for almost nine months. Um, they sold the house. He, he was also visiting each of us kids and going different places. And he, when he finally found a place and a job that he was excited about, um, he ended up renting a furnished apartment um, didn't allow pets. He wasn't necessarily looking for one because he was kind of secretly thinking, I'm hoping Kristen will just want to keep the dog indefinitely because he didn't necessarily want the dog. And in my husband's mind, he was like, oh, your dad's going to take the dog back. And I was like, 
yeah, I don't think my dad's going to take the dog back. So after he'd been in our house about six months, um, he'd never been trained. He'd always just done, he's about seven years old. He always did whatever the heck he wanted to do. He never learned sit. He never came. He kind of just coexisted with my mom and she was fine with that. I think he, she, he slept in the bed and lots of people have dogs that sleep in their bed with them. That's fine. That was not something that we were interested in doing. So when he first came, Simba actually we put him up in our boys' room. Our boys thought that would be fun. And as a precursor, our kids had asked for a dog in the past. Um, not a lot. Every once in a while, they'd be like, oh, can we get a dog? And we'd be like, mm, no, I don't think so. And they'd be like, okay. You know, it wasn't like they were begging. I've heard lots of people say their kids beg. And for a while, I was like, ah, I feel like it's like the ultimate American experience to have a dog in your home, right? And we're depriving our children of this in their childhood. And so in my, the back of my mind, I was like, oh, I feel bad about this, but man, that's a commitment. An animal is a commitment. We had had other animals um, that were shorter commitments. For some reason, we actually had a really horrible track record with animals. We're not so good. We'd had a, a lizard, that, uh, a bearded dragon that didn't live very long. We'd had hamsters and just little things like that here and there that were like, man, we're just not meant. So we kind of crossed our fingers like six months was the longest we'd ever had an animal survive. And we're like, once he made it past the six month mark, we're like, okay, I mean, maybe the curse is broken. I don't know. So, but those first six months were pretty tricky because he did whatever he wanted. He would kind of roam the house while we were sleeping and my husband would hear him. He's got the collar. He would shake. He wouldn't necessarily bark, but I mean, my husband's a super light sleeper and was getting horrible sleep. So he's like, I can't do this anymore. We need to figure out something. So I was like, okay, I hired a trainer. And the trainer came, he helped us learn sit, he helped us learn down. I'd worked with him for several weeks, he came to the house and he taught me about this treat and send him program. And so, um, uh, so he's like, yeah, if you can train him to sit and do all these things, then he'll start eventually learning commands. And then when you call him, he will learn that command. And he was the one that suggested creating him. He's like, he's like, you're in charge of the dog, not the dog in charge of you. And now like, we're all a little jumpy because I'd never really had experience with a dog. I didn't really have a, a dog growing up. We had a cat. Um, my husband had one for a short term, which was a bad experience because he bit his brother and then they had to get rid of him. Um, so we were all a little jumpy and we're not, you know, with animals, like you have to be in charge and you have to show confidence and then no, no, no. So I was trying to show confidence and the trainer was kind of laughing at me as I was like tiptoeing around the dog. He's like, why are you tiptoeing? And I'm like, cause I'm kind of scared he's going to bite me. And he's like, cause he would nip at us. He would nip here and there. My husband, there was just all this stress around the dog and the nipping. And he's like, I, and he got this like Papa bear of like, I don't want him biting you. I don't want him biting the kids. And so stress, stress, stress. So once the trainer came, taught us these things, we got a crate for him. We put the crate in the laundry room and for a while we kind of got it figured out, but the little toy poodle, poodles apparently are smart and he figured it out. And then every night he would try and go hide in a corner somewhere when he knew that we were going to put him in to his kennel. And so he used to go in my office and they, and then I'd, I, I mean, I've been talking to people for a year and a half, dog tips, dog tips, help me reading stuff help me figure out the situation. I was kind of to the point where I was like, we've had him for a while. He's not as bad as I thought he would be. You know, I had friends that are like, what do you think? And I'm like, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. I mean, he's a, a great dog. He doesn't shed. He, you know, for the most part, he's very sweet and fun and playful. But then like he would turn it on at nighttime when we try to put him in, in the crate and he turned vicious and he tried, he tried to bite my son and he kind of, it did break skin, but it wasn't like bad enough, right? That we figured it was awful, you know, but my husband was like, mm, like he, he's basically been shaking his head in the background this whole time. Um, mostly just because he's afraid that he's going to hurt us. And so we tried things like off limits. Okay. You know, someone said, if you have areas that are off limits and it ha helps to train him that, you know, you're in charge or whatever. So he used to hide at my feet in my office and then that's a corner he would go into. And so my office became off limits and he would listen. I just go eh, 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 and he wouldn't go in. He wouldn't go up the stairs. He wouldn't go in a room. So mostly it was just a downstairs thing. Anyway, long story short, um, paid a lot of money for the trainer. It seemed to work for a couple of months and then it didn't. And so then whenever we try to get him at night, um, we had to find ways to trick him. We'd have kids knock at the door. So he'd want to go running for the door. And then he outsmarted us and he would never go to the door at nighttime whenever somebody knocked. So we we're just trying to like, we'd think of a way to trick him 
and then it would wear off and then we'd have to think of another way to trick him and it wear off and then like the nighttime routine was going on and on my husband's like oh my gosh I can't sleep and then he would lay there just stressed out and not being able to sleep and then when the dog would try and nip at us he would lay there and he's like I can't handle it so we got these talon gloves I'm gonna have to show you the gloves come here buddy so here's a few of the two contraptions we tried we got these falcon gloves uh, which he gets a little bit nervous about because the, or they're like raptor raptor gloves why don't you just sit right there these raptor gloves see you see I'm all nervous around him these raptor gloves because we felt like okay we can pick him up and if he tries to bite then it's thick enough right if it's thick enough for a raptor talons then it shouldn't bother us but we could definitely feel the pressure through the skin if he'd try and nip at us and then we ended up getting this grabber because we'd try and like grab his collar which is look he's a little nervous can you see that all right Simba, we're gonna go for a walk you ready come here Let's go for a walk. Come on. Zimba. Okay, so I'm going to try and grab him. I'm going to try and push him first. <clears throat> okay, this is document, Simba, that you're mean. Okay. Come on, let's go. Let's go. There we go. Come on. We're going to go for a walk. We're going to go get school. We tried the raptor gloves and we tried the grabber to kind of grab his collar and then he started getting nervous whenever he'd see those come around so everything seemed to be okay we'd go on vacation and we made a little barricade in the kitchen because we wanted him to feel like he could roam around um but the last two vacations we went on our friends and neighbors were coming over and they're like he won't even go outside he won't come like he doesn't seem to be eating and Part of it is we didn't know what was typical because we didn't have we hadn't had a dog before, and the other part of it is just <sighs> just unsure what exactly to expect. So we feel like we had tried a lot of things, and really, my husband about six months ago was like, "Can I see about trying to find a better home for him?" And I'm like, oh, "I don't know. The kids, like, you know, they're sad." And my oldest was the main one who would help us get him at night. He kind of figured out a method. Whereas my other three were kind of afraid of him. My oldest daughter has never actually picked him up because she's kind of scared. And she's actually the one who ironically now is the most sad and has been more emotional about letting him go because she feels like maybe we can try harder, maybe this, maybe that. Um, my youngest adores him but he is annoyed by her. And so she would just go pet him and would hear, would hear him growling at her. And we're like, what the heck? And so she'd get kind of bouncy and jump away. And, you know, and so it's one of those things that's like, oh my gosh, we can we have a dog growling and, you know, our kids being kind of afraid of him and my husband being stressed out, not sleeping. And, you know, his heart would just go crazy sometimes at night to where even when we got him away from trying to get him to bed, he couldn't sleep because he was already worked up from being stressed out about it so it's it's just been a whole thing and just lately um, my oldest son who was the one he and I were the ones that took the responsibility every night to put him away and we said you know we'll do it but I think it was I think it wasn't until my oldest son recently was like yeah I can't do this anymore when he started to get a little bit nervous um, and was like he kind of was like, okay, I can't, I'm not going to, I can't fight for him anymore because it just kind of kept getting worse and worse. So a little bit sad. Um, like I said, I've enjoyed, I haven't hated it. I, I haven't hated it as much as I thought I would. Um, and I think our biggest thing is he needs to be in a home where he can kind of do whatever he wants to. And I know there's many homes out there like that. Um, and so we found him a home where it's um, an older lady and she likes the dog to sleep in her bed and is kind of looking forward to that and having that kind of company. And so that makes us happy to think, good, we know that's what he wants. And our kids are like, maybe we can try harder. It's not good for him to have to change again and go to a new home. And we're like, we get that. We get that it's sad for him. But my husband was like, it's actually better for him to be in a place where he can be happy and do whatever he wants, and that's actually going to be happy, happier for him in the long run. He doesn't like being caged up, um, 
and you know most people say oh our kids love the or our dogs love the kennel and they just go in there to hide out sometimes like he never did that he doesn't like being in there and so if we're a home that we want him to be in a kennel at night and he is a dog that doesn't want to be and becomes vicious when we try and put him in there then we just feel like ultimately like this isn't the place for him and so as hard as it is like my kids are all sad um, we feel like it's best for him and it's best for the peace of our home so that's kind of the bittersweet story um, of <laughs> what's going on and why our dog is going to a new home so I'm sure I'm gonna get some <laughs> emails from people saying we could have done this we could have done that but ultimately I feel like we we did try and we tried for quite a, a while and it just comes down to the fact that we want to have peace in our home and um, with the uncertainty of his mood uh, we're just not we're just not interested in in dealing with that so that's the story um, love to hear your thoughts in the comments below do I want to hear your thoughts I don't know um, but I know people are gonna have lots to say I'm sure people will have negative thoughts to say you know what I ultimately I wanted to share this because um, a part of our history part of my family's history and I thought it was important to share
for me. Slink her off. Why are you hiding? Huh? Don't you need to go to the bathroom?